Good morning! It's a beautiful day here at Huggy Dubby Homestead and today Edie Ray and I are going to finish harvesting our black currant bushes. There has been a lot of rain recently and earlier on in the spring it was hot. So our four-year-old black currant bush has produced a bumper crop this year. Let me show you how you know it's time to harvest those berries. So here's what a four-year-old black currant bush looks like. When I originally got it, it was about one foot by one foot tall, so not huge. And the production of berries has obviously increased the yield each year. Now, the way that you can tell if a berry is ready for picking or not would be based on the color of the berry. So right here you can see we've got some really black colored berries there. Those are ones that are ready to be harvested. If I was to lift up this branch a little bit here, you're gonna see some that are still green, that haven't turned to red, and then there's those red ones. If you go a little further down, that's where you're gonna see your black ones. So this is a good selection of seeing the progress of the berries as it ripens. You're not going to pick the red and green berries at this point, just the black ones. And E. Ray was out here for about 45 minutes yesterday, and then I was here for an additional 45. And we're at 16 cups already, and we still have loads more to pick. So we will see what our yield ends up being in the end. I'm helping my mom do my black currant jam. It is quite, quite hard to do so for your first time, but this isn't my first time. Uh, but um, the first step is to take out all the twigs and like, here's one of them what the, it has. This is what it, it looks like. You take it off, put it in the bowl, put it in, and then there's a whole bunch of leaves and stuff. And then it takes a while if you have a lot. And then So why are these, you taking off the stems, Edie? So they're not nice and crunchy in the jam. That's a good reason. And then this is what they look like. Oh gosh. Yeah. Mmm, delicious. They're a bit bitter in a way. If you eat them without getting cooked. It doesn't taste that nice. But once you cook them up with a little sugar, they taste nice and sweet. So this is the next step. And you see the difference in between the four-year-old bush. This is the two things we made, like a big pot is. And then the two-year-old bush. So our four-year-old bush, we got 24 cups of berries. And for our two-year-old bush, we got about half a cup. So the yield is much more as the years go on with growing of this bush. Because like on this one, we got 24 cups. And on that one, we got half a cup. Yeah. And this time, we're cleaning. Yeah. We're going to add water to... So, like clean all of it. And now we're going over to the sink. And we're going to let them sit in the water for about 30 minutes in order to ensure that they get completely cleaned off. And after the 30 minutes, we'll rinse them clear. So we're finishing off step two, getting all the debris and the bugs off of it. It might taste a little weird if we don't scoop it out. So that's why we're getting it out. And then... Once you've scooped out of all the debris, what's the last step for step two? We pour out the water. Uh, we have to prepare all of our stuff, like the lemon juice, sugar, and our black currants. So we are using these to prepare the jams. 
So we've got our surface all set up here with all the items that we're going to need in order to preserve our jam. We've got one of three batches of the ingredients ready to rock and roll. We've got our three canning kit items that we tend to use the most of. The funnel, which allows us to make sure that our jars stay nice and clean when we're putting the jam into the jars. Um, our jar lifter, and this here has a little magnet tip on it, and that allows us to take out our lids and allow them to stay in a sterile environment for when we put them on top of our glass jars. We do have our water bath going here, getting it prepped in time for us to get our preserves in there once we've made the jam. And the whole intent of using the water bath is to ensure the safe storage of the jam so then it can stay at room temperature for up to a year. So unlike the freezer jam that once you cook it, it does need to stay in the freezer in order for it to be safe to use if you aren't going to do your hot water bath. But today we're going to do that with the intent that then we can leave it in our cold cellar. Last item that we had to prep was our jars. We've washed them in soapy water, cleaned them off, and now they're laying on top of a cookie sheet with water in the base of it. And we've set the temperature of our oven as low as possible at 170. And this way, when our jam is ready to go into the jars, we're able to pull those right out of the oven. They'll be hot and the jars won't crack then when we put our hot jam substance inside of them. Step four, I'm putting the berries into the pot for a boil for 20 minutes. So our berries are now boiled down and it's time to add the next ingredients. What are you adding, Edie? So I'm adding some lemon juice. sugar. And that's cane sugar that we're using. And I mix it in. That's right. And once it's all mixed in, how long are you going to leave this on the stove top for? 20 minutes. Okay. So it needs to boil down some more. Get really thick. And this is what the lemon juice and the sugar is what makes it very, very thick, like not just like juice. That's right. So black currants have a really high pectin level. So by using the lemon juice, that helps to preserve the jam. And we aren't actually needing to use a pectin on top of it in order to preserve this. So now we're gonna wait and get this to a rolling boil and make sure that all the sugar crystals dissolve and then we'll move on to our next step. Okay, so we're ready. Our jars are sterile, they're warm, and they are ready for the jam to go in. We have done our jam to the point that it is thickened and looks delicious and is ready to go into those jars. So I'm gonna transfer it over here to the cutting board. And I need my handy helper, Edie Ray. Here you go. So we are going to use this funnel here to transfer the jam over into the jars. And I have been stirring the contents of the jam with a wooden spoon but I am going to transfer over to using the stainless steel spoon just because it will scoop a little bit faster. Now, there are um, some people that would choose not to use a stainless steel just in case it transfers a metallic taste over to the jam. However, we haven't noticed that with ours, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Makes a little bit cleaner. A few drops just drop there. Transfer. Now I am going to fill this up to half an inch uh, to the top, allowing that head space to remain in the jar. 
And the reason why you need that headspace is because once your jar is being boiled in the water bath, you want to allow that space so that when there's an expansion of the food, it's not gonna overflow and cause your jars not to seal properly. Okay, so once we've got the second jar filled, I'm gonna show you how we put the lids on. Oh, it smells so good. We'll be sure to be tasting this later on over some ice cream, I'm sure. Is this your favorite type of jam, Janelle? It is, and I gotta say, Levi also acknowledges that it is his favorite, and I think because this is Edie Ray's jam that she participates in making the most, she might agree as well. I actually like the, the one that we made once, and it's called the rhubarb, rhubarb strawberry one. I really like that one. That one's your fave? Okay. It's nice to have different ones too, right? Okay, so now I'm going to use this handy dandy little contraption that has a, a magnet on the tip of it. And this allows us to pull out the tops of our lids and put them on top. Now, that first one there that I just put the lid on top of, it was nice and clean. I'm gonna just double check that my, my lid here on this one. Okay, so I'm sorry about the abrupt ending there. Our storage was full. So here we are back. Uh, what I'm gonna show you is how this handy dandy tool works really well at pulling out the metal lid for us that we use to seal the jars. So it's got that rubber, oh! it's got that rubber base on it. That's gonna be the item that seals around our jar tops. Now I was mentioning there that if I noted that I had dribbled some jam along the tops of my jars, I would have been using a, a damp cloth just to wipe them off. But those two were very clean, which was great. Now, when I put the screw top on, I just finger tightened it. The reason why you don't want to over tighten that is because it does affect the air as it uh, exits the jam. And we wanna make sure that the air does come out when it is in the hot water bath, because that's gonna allow it to seal once it comes back out of that and has a chance to sit for 24 hours. So now's the opportunity. We're gonna put it in the hot water bath and when it comes out, we're gonna hope that we hear a pop. Okay, so we've got all of our jars of jam canned up into the glass containers. Now we're going to hot water bath them. So the importance of doing the hot water bath allows us to store these jars at room temperature um, in a cool, dark place once we are finished. Now we will be boiling them um, at a rolling boil for 10 minutes. And we are just under a thousand feet above, above sea level here at Huggy Dubby Homestead. And so if you are living anywhere above that, you are gonna add for every 1,000 feet above sea level, you are gonna add an additional minute to your boiling time of your hot, uh, hot bath here. So we're gonna do 10 minutes and allow these guys to seal right up. Once the seal has formed, uh, when we take them out, you're gonna want to wait and hear a popping sound that comes from the jars. And that is an indication that the seal has formed and you are safe to use your jars or to put your jars away. You are also going to uh, wait 24 hours before putting them down into your uh, cooled dry basement or if you have a cold cellar. 
So that's all I'm going to be able to fit in there. Now I am not going to double stack on top of the jars because that can affect the sealing of them. So I'm going to do these at 10 minutes and then I'll do the last two jars after that. So that's a wrap for now.